The outdoor lifestyle is one of the things that makes Australia famous and Victoria's contribution to this is second to none. So get ready for a journey that takes in this fantastic aspect of the state. If you fancy having a shot at being a beach bum, grab your board, wetsuit and maybe even your bucket and spade and head here to Torquay, 60 miles west of the city. It's not only a major resort town, but also the home of Bells Beach. The Rip Curl Pro Surfing Championship is held here during Easter, where the world's top surfers gather to ride the waves. Well, Bells Beach is a really unique place. Uh, it's a type of wave that comes out of deep water from um, storms out uh, way down near the Antarctic. So we get huge waves here at different times of the year. Unlike much of the rest of Australia, Victoria's natural diversity can be seen within a couple of hours of the city. Places such as the famous Twelve Apostles, the Grampians and Phillip Island are all within easy reach and more about them later. But first, the Great Ocean Road. Now you may think that a video that covers some of Victoria's 38 national parks and rich variety of landscapes may not feature a bit of tarmac, but this road is a bit special. For example, even a simple trip to a golf course will give you a truly Australian sight. Even if you don't play, it's worth checking out the fairways at Anglesey. The golfers are fairly ambivalent to uh, the kangaroos on the course. They realise uh, they have to share the facilities with them and uh, they coexist quite well. They're all wild, um, but they're very tame in nature. Um, golfers will walk right past them um, and won't, they won't even budge for them. Quite a few have been hit by golf balls and it's said that one golfer actually hit a ball into a kangaroo's pouch. Thankfully though, I'm rubbish at golf so whilst I'm here they should be pretty safe. Kangaroos are also a feature of this amazing place, the Cape Otway Centre for Conservation and Ecology on the edge of Cape Otway National Park. This is Rove and Conrad. These two are babies number. 209 and 210 that the, the centre has raised and, and successfully um, rehabilitated and released back to, back to the wild populations. Powered entirely by the sun, the Eco Lodge collects its water from the skies and leaves an almost imperceptible footprint upon the earth. Like it's very, very peaceful here. We, um, the serenity is, is uh, just absolutely stunning, the, the outlook. You're really quite close to the coast as well. Um, it's just a magic place, and it's a magic part of the world and, and we have such an amazing little environment down here. The tranquility is only ever disturbed by the sound of indigenous wild animals in their natural habitat. You can also participate in ecological research projects, enjoy the beach and even get a guided Great Ocean Walk experience. Cape Otway's lush forest is also the setting for our next great outdoors experience, the Otway Fly Treetop Walk. The walk is 600 metres long, but the key thing is the height. It's 25 metres up, giving you a fantastic view of the forest. You then switch from hugging the trees to once more hugging the coast, and as promised, the most famous of the great ocean road landmarks, the Twelve Apostles, these huge rock sculptures have been formed by the weather eroding the soft limestone cliffs. They're world famous and it's not hard to see why. A two minute drive from the Twelve Apostles will bring you here. It's called Loch Ar Gorge and it's been named after the clipper wrecked here in 1878. This is where the only two survivors reached the shore. All travellers like to hear of a little known gem, something that makes them feel like they're in on the secret. Well, the Great Ocean Road's contender is Tower Hill Reserve. For those with the love of nature, it is heaven. It sits inside an extinct volcano and it's a haven for free roaming wildlife. This volcano started 32,000 years ago. It started with a huge explosion. This was because of the uh, large um, wet layer deep underground here that when the magma pushed up through it it literally exploded uh, leaving a crater 3.2 kilometers in diameter. 
It sits right at the end of the Great Ocean Road and it's easy to see why it's well worth going those few extra miles. After all, it's not the kind of thing you get to see in your back garden. You'll be forgiven for thinking that Victoria's biggest natural attractions are all on the coast. But one hour north of Tower Hill, there lies an area of rugged beauty that captures everybody's imagination. It's called the Grampians. It's 150 miles northwest of Melbourne and renowned for its breathtaking views. For example, there's Mount Abrupt and Mount Sturgeon, and it's also rich in indigenous heritage. Uh, the Aboriginal history of this area is quite extensive, um, as evidenced by the Aboriginal rock art sites within the National Park. The age of these, these art sites, um, some go back 20,000 years, so they're quite um, ancient and uh, very special to Aboriginal people. Here at Brambuck we offer many things. We have cultural activities that run, such as you can come here to learn to throw a boomerang or play a didgeridoo, uh, bush tucker tasting. People like to come and try some kangaroo or crocodile or emu. It's a um, good experience for people. The park's also home to almost a third of Victoria's plant species and a large percentage of its animals. Scenery such as this is perfect for those who want to get out of the car and explore. Whether it's climbing, hiking or mountain biking, you could spend years exploring all the things to do. This walk is only short, but at the end there's something a bit special. Mackenzie Falls in the northern Grampians. Sometimes it really is very hard to believe that you can get an experience like this just a few hours from a major city. But the Grampians are like so much in Victoria, a total one-off. Now finally, an unmissable and unforgettable highlight when it comes to wildlife in Victoria is this place, and it's called Phillip Island. It's a 90 minute drive southeast of Melbourne and most famous for its little penguins. So the penguin parade here at Phillip Island is an absolutely magical experience. They are the smallest penguins in the world and they go out to sea early in the morning and then crowds of people gather at sunset to watch them waddle across the beach from a day's fishing. And it's very funny, it's very endearing, it's just an amazing experience. From penguins to seals at the aptly named Seal Rocks and the best way to get there is on this thing, the rib or the rigid inflatable boat. may be the fastest way to get there, but you can also take the more sedate option. Well, the fur seals out at Seal Rocks, which is about one and a half kilometres offshore at Phillip Island, are something that you just really have to see to believe. There's over 25,000 fur seals jumping in the water, lolling over the rocks. It's just an amazing experience again. And those seals, are, it's just one of the largest colonies of Australian fur seals in the world that you experience out there at Seal Rocks. And finally, there is an Aussie icon. At the Koala Sanctuary, you can wander the treetop boardwalk and view them at close range in their natural habitat. We have wetlands, we have miles of walking tracks. So from wild ocean beaches through to tranquil mangrove inlets with boardwalks, you can go bird watching and just lots of the wildlife experiences that you can have anywhere on the island. You might drive past a wallaby or an echidna crossing the road. It is just an amazing place to come and visit. Basically, if you love the outdoor life, there is no better place to come to than Victoria. But if you can't fit it all in, don't panic because there is a solution. Just come back for more.